Okay, this video is Paintings of Chivalry, Part 3. It's from this book right here, The Best Christian Art by me, Pete Rogers. Okay, so the first painting here, we're on Part 3 of Chivalry Paintings. First painting right here is Lady Godiva. So what happened was her husband, uh, the king, was increasing the taxes on the people, and she felt bad for the people. And he said, the only way I'm going to lower taxes is if you ride through town, you know, butt naked on a horse. And so she's thinking about it here in this picture. And then as the legend goes... She said, yes, she would do it. So here she is riding through town, Lady Godiva. This one's by John Collier. And I think a lot of this beautiful painting, it, it arose out of the tradition that, you know, in the churches to educate the people, most of them were illiterate about the Christian story, they had to make all these paintings. And people saw how magnificent it was and they just kept on wanting to make more paintings. Christianity just gets people to paint. That's why it has by far the best painting of any culture in the history of the world. All other cultures compared to Christianity stink at painting. If you, th if you, if you know one, let me know. But let's be honest about it, okay? Everybody likes to criticize Christianity. Look at the great things that it does. It's magnificent at painting. Okay, now here is like, this painting is called Fame and you see the old bard over here. And what this reminds me of, of course, is if you teach the true nutrition diet, low fat, low sodium, vegan, Okay, you don't get many people interested in hearing about it. If you tell everybody, you know, uh, high fat, all this other junk, you get a lot, a lot more audience. And this is uh, Edmund Layton. He's a magnificent painter, just magnificent. And all these chival chivalry paintings, they're fantastic. It's really the history of me medieval Middle Ages Christianity. And the Middle Ages were much more impressive than people think, okay? A lot of innovation came out of those years that you just don't hear about, okay? The Renaissance came out of that. The whole Dominican movement with Aquinas, you know, and, you know, Charlemagne, Alcuin, all that stuff, okay? This book also is good, I think, for, um, for uh, homeschoolers, you know? It's the most beautiful art book ever made. And the reason it's so great is because I just put the good stuff in there. Your university professor puts all this Byzantine stuff, cave paintings and uh, modern art crap and pretends it's real. I don't do any of that. Only the good stuff. Um, and this is another one about the bard. This one is the bard, you know, singing on the hill. Let me look at my own paper version here. And this one's by John Martin from 1817, which, you know, rather beautiful. It's a little bit reminds me of John the Baptist crying out in the wilderness, you know, and you see the knights. Uh, you know, on the move down here, leaving the castle. Okay. It's all beautiful, all this stuff. I love it. Yeah, we can get it shown. There's, there wasn't much there at the bottom on it. You can just see a little bit more of it. John Martin made a lot of these good, almost like fantasy art paintings here. Okay, this painting is Tracing the Goodbye by Edmund Layton. And this is kind of an awesome painting. So her, you know, husband lover has got to go out on, you know, the crusade or whatever war he's got to go to. You see the boats waiting down below, and uh, it's pretty sad, and she misses him so much. She's tracing his shadow um, on the wall. It's beautiful. She's got to stay home, take care of the babies. And the women got to stay home because women are a lot better taking care of the babies. In the old days, you know, women used to just have one baby, and if and as soon as they stop nursing, they're pregnant again. In the Victorian age, for example, it's pretty routine for a woman to have 10 children, to be have ten, go through you know, 10 full pregnancies. Okay, so, um, and also, if the women all went to war and died, uh, then there would be nobody to repopulate the population. And some people even say that's one of the reasons why there's a push to put women into the you-know-what, DR, you-know-what, AFT, to depopulate a population, okay? I'm not kidding. You think about it, it makes sense. But anyways, this is a magnificent painting. Okay, now here's a painting that I love as well. This one's called Meeting on the Turret Stairs by Frederick William Burton of Ireland from 1864. This is the most famous Irish painting of all, of all time. And these long-distance romances, man, they're hard on the heart. And, you know, he's got to go. You don't know if he's coming back. It's pretty sad. It's beautiful, okay? It's true love. It's beautiful. Okay, and here's another just magnificent painting. There's the top of it. This one's Godspeed by Edmund Layton. And everything is just perfect. You know, the expression on their faces, you see they love each other. They're sad. They understand the consequences, the significance of the moment. You know, she's probably taking care of the little babies at home. He's going to fight for the safety of their country. 
Um, and the men and women, you know, they got different roles. And, you know, it's what makes society work. And it's just, it's just life. It's just perfect. It's just good. Uh, I love this painting. I love Edmund Layton's paintings. They're magnificent. Godspeed is the name of this painting. Godspeed from 1900, Edmund Layton. Okay, here's a painting by Edward Byrne Jones, 1890, Public Domain, The Departure of the Knights. And it's another great painting, and he was another one of the members of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. He was like a direct member of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, whereas Edmund Layton was more like a younger disciple of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. And it's just magnificent. And, you know, you see the gender roles are pretty clear. The men go to fight, the women stay home, take care of the babies. And you know what? That works out better for everybody. Um... I know from experience, like I saw my mother and my father. My dad was a doctor worker all the time, and my mom ran the family, and that worked fantastic, okay? You know, um, if, they, if they compete with each other, they sometimes kind of slow each other down a little bit. Like, uh, it's paradoxical, but I would have actually made more money if my wife would have stayed home. But because she worked, I had to change my jobs, and I actually made less money. Don't get me wrong, I do fine, but... You know, it, it was the way it works out in terms of how much we get paid and stuff. We would get paid more if I worked more. Anyways, I'm not going to go into the details of it, but what I'm trying to say is there's advantages to specialization, and this is a magnificent painting, and I love the chivalry paintings. Here's another one by Edmund Layton, 1897, from Times of Peril, and you can see something big is going on, so they got to you know take off real fast. Again, it's just beautiful. It's perfect because not only is it authentic, authentic, authentic and detailed and precise and realistic, but their emotions, their emotions are what makes it such a fantastic painting. It's perfect, you know, they're looking around, they're worried, they're cautious, they're in a hurry. It's all perfect. This guy's one of the greatest painters of all time, Edmund Layton, hardly anybody knows about him. Okay, and that's all we got for today um, on part three of Chivalry Paintings. I uh, hope you enjoyed that.